welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of betting on yourself. Betting on yourself is one of the most important decisions you will ever make. So often, we wait for others to bet or believe in us first before we make the decision to bet on ourselves. We wait for the validation of others to give us that boost of confidence and motivation that we are talented or deserving enough to go after our dreams. The harsh reality is that not everyone can see the invisible dream you have for yourself and in which you hold in your heart. Waiting for other people's opinions or validation to take action might not ever happen, so it's counterproductive to wait on external validation of any sort. The truth is, we must bet and believe in ourselves before anyone else does, because you and you alone can make that dream a reality. So how do we bet on ourselves? We must first truly believe that the gifts we've been given are unique to only us. Once you believe this, it gives you the confidence to show your talents to the world without needing anyone else's approval. Your belief in yourself is the only motivation you need to propel you forward. As the saying goes, invest in yourself. It pays the best interest. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. I watched your documentary, The Untold Story of Lennox Lewis, and it was, it was incredible because you've had some major accomplishments um, and you've met some legendary people. You know, you've met um, Nelson Mandela, Muhammad Ali. So talk to us about those experiences because they're epic. <laughs> yeah, and they were epic for me too, you know, even to be in, uh, you know, to meet my hero, Muhammad Ali, for the first time. I remember when I met him and I was in the North Americans um, and he was at ringside and everybody was saying, hey, Muhammad Ali's at ringside, Muhammad Ali's at ringside. So mentally in my mind, I said, oh, I want to impress him. I want to show him that I'm a good fighter. So I went out there and I was actually boxing a Cuban boxer, great boxer. And, um, you know, we went at it. I, you know, I really rushed the Cuban fighter. I showed that I had that, you know, toughness, that desire. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have legendary boxer Lennox Lewis, who is a three-time world heavyweight champion, a two-time lineal champion, and remains the last heavyweight to hold the undisputed championship. Lennox, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's honestly an honor to have you on the show, so I really appreciate you coming on. So I want to talk, before we dive into your career, because everyone knows you as a legendary boxer, but let's take it to the beginning. When did you realize your passion for boxing? When I realized my passion for boxing, I think it was really at a young age, like, uh, you know, 14, 13, around that age. And it was a situation where, you know, I was playing many different sports and I realized that you know, the individual sport boxing where it really depended on solely you and you didn't have to depend on the team. That's when it was. Mm -hmm. And what were your first steps to, you know, taking boxing to the next level and making it a career? Did you have like a pull within you that kind of, you knew this was going to be something big for you? Well, the, the pull was uh, really, you know, the first step, you have to go through steps. And it was winning the Ontarios, being the best mm -hmm. in the Ontarios, or even being the best in your city. And then you want to be the best in Ontario. Then you want to be the best in Canada. So it was a gradual, you know, uh, momentum of uh, the wheel going, you know, rolling over and accomplishing each goal as the steps went on. So, you know, I was happy that, you know, I was accomplishing these goals. People were saying that I was, you, you know, I'm going to be a great fighter. I'm going to be a great fighter. But me as a young kid, I never really seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, I work, work towards it and this is the results. Mm -hmm. And what was your first major big break? My first major big break, I, uh, I would say representing the country mm. uh, in a way. And let's say we went to uh, Ireland or somewhere to challenge their team and uh, to go away representing Canada, you know, it's a big thing. And we're going over to Ireland, we're boxing Ireland in their home country and to come away with a victory is oh, is, a, is, a, is a great thing. So I think that that's, that's one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, I watched your documentary, The Untold Story of Lennox Lewis, and it was it was incredible because you've had some major accomplishments um, and you've met some legendary people. You know, you've met um, Nelson Mandela, Muhammad Ali. So talk to us about those experiences because they're epic. <laughs> yeah, and they were epic for me too, you know, even to be in, uh, you know, to meet my hero, Muhammad Ali, for the first time. I remember when I met him and I was in the North Americans um, and he was at ringside and everybody was saying, hey, Muhammad Ali's at ringside, Muhammad Ali's at ringside. So mentally in my mind, I said, oh, I want to impress him. I want to show him that I'm a good fighter. So I went out there and I was actually boxing a Cuban boxer, great boxer. And, um, you know, we went at it. I, you know, I really rushed the Cuban fighter. I showed that I had that, you know, toughness, that desire and that champion spirit. So I remember stepping out of the ring after the fight and meeting him and he goes, I was watching you, you're gonna be good someday, you're gonna be good someday. And I'm like, yeah, Mom Dali starts gonna be good someday. Wow. So a big smile on my face. Yeah. And then as far as Nelson Mandela, you know, meeting him, he just wanted to talk about boxing. You know, he yeah. he, he knows about all the great fighters like Mom Dali, Joe Fraser, uh, George Foreman. And we spoke about those different fighters. And he, we even spoke about my loss because I actually lost a fight before meeting him. And he said, don't worry about that. You know, when you're at your best using that jab, because he's been watching me, he said, you know, you can win the fight. So he gave me that extra spirit going into the uh, rematch uh, against Rockman. And, uh, you know, I, I was victorious. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about your coach. You know, how did he kind of push you and motivate you through, you know, the wins and the losses? Well, uh, I've, met, I've had many different coaches. You know, my first coach was Arnie Bean from Kitchener Waterloo. And, you know, I've had uh, Adrian Tidoresco and I've had some professional coaches like, you know, Manny Stewart is, is obviously, you know, my coach, um, great, great trainer. And, uh, uh, you know, Pepe Carrera, different uh, coaches bring different things. So let's start, start with my first coach. He said, you know, you're going to be great someday. You're going to be a good uh, boxer. All you have to do is, you know, focus, dedicate, and, and and put yourself to boxing. I'm like, okay. I didn't really see it, like I said, you know, until I started winning, doing the right things, you know, going to bed early, training hard, sacrificing uh, what I needed to sacrifice, eating good. And, uh, you know, things really worked out for me. So um, I think that's what really helped me. Yeah, and I want to ask you, you know, what does it take? One thing I like to do on my show is really dive into the minds of successful people because people can learn so much. Um, yeah. So, you know, how did you kind of prepare mentally and physically before you got into the ring? Because you always seemed very calm and collective and it did, you never seemed afraid or scared. I'm sure there were moments that you you were, but, but how did you prepare yourself, you know, to win and have that winning mindset? Yeah. The more I prepare, the less I worry. Mm. So, for me, it was all in the preparation, making sure that, I, you know, I trained hard, making sure I was ready for anything that may may happen, you know. Sometimes uh, I would go into situations where it's really high heat. So, you know, I would remember uh, shadow boxing in a sauna just to prepare for that. So, not, you know, even when I'm at the arena, uh, in the ring and it's hot, I've already gone through it already, so I've prepared for it. So, like I said, the more I prepare, the less I worry. Mm -hmm. And just the, the sacrifice, the focus, having true focus, you know, knowing what you want and realize how to get there is very important. Making a plan, got to make the plan. You know, it all starts with a plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those people that haven't watched the documentary, The Untold Truth of Lennox Lewis, it's narrated by Dr. Dre, which is amazing. Um, you know, what's something that they could learn about you maybe that they didn't know before? Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you that. What did you learn about me that you didn't know before? I guess because I've met you on red carpets before and I've, I've interviewed you before and you always seem just very... Um, just just very grounded and humble and to see you in the ring and so fierce and you know obviously as a boxer i was like wow you know even though he's won and he's this champion he's he's so so humble um which was one thing that i really took away and um it's incredible that you've stayed humble through it all and success has not got to your head because you know i, I interview a lot of people and sometimes you know 
with more success, people sometimes, yeah. you know, lose sight of uh, the real, their real purpose. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's I mean, I've had a, thank you. I've had a lot of help from, uh, you know, people around me, uh, great people around me. Uh, my mom is a big uh, helper. You know, she said, always stay out of trouble mm -hmm. and work hard. And, you know, she was there on my journey with me. So uh, it's, it's really great when you have great people behind you, especially family members. You know, like I said, my mom was there and I had a lot of friends, you know, Courtney Shan from Kitchener. And, uh, you know, I got some friends from England that all pitched in to help uh, help me do my greatness. Mm -hmm. And speaking of greatness, you know, what do you think has separated you from other people out there? Because you've obviously been incredibly successful. So what do you think has really been the key to your success? Um, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that want to be boxers, athletes, but very few reach, you know, the pinnacle of success that you have. So what do you think has separated you from others? Um, you know, I don't think really anything can really separate you from, from others. Just hard work. I mean, mm. dedication you know sacrifice these are the things that i had to do and most successful people have to do this you know it's like how did you get there well i had to work hard you know i had to do this you know get up early make sure you're not late all these different things you know um that you have to do just good habits you know a lot of people have bad habits i say good habits so develop good habits and good things will happen to you mm -hmm. And, you know, what do you think has, you know, also developed your mindset? Because, you know, when you're in the ring, I'm sure there were times that defeat or fear could take over. So what kind of made you stay focused um, and have that winning mindset? I guess being wanting, want, no, visualizing, I guess, visualizing what I want, wanted. I wanted to be a champion. I wanted to be successful. So in order to be successful, I had to follow this, these rules. You know, I couldn't be partying all night. I couldn't be hanging with the wrong people. So uh, what I had to do is focus on, on my craft, my art. You know, I'm a pugilist specialist. So, you know, this is what I want to do and become and be known for. Mm -hmm. And what's been one of your most memorable milestones in your career to date? memorable milestone let me tell you there's been a lot uh but you know winning the olympics was a a, a great my, milestone for me because um you know i had to go back twice i went to the 84 olympics and uh, i got beat by tyrell biggs so i was still young and i could have gone pro but i decided to stay amateur for four more years go back to the 88 Olympics and be and be a winner and come out of the, the 88 Olympics with a gold medal first ever gold medal for Canada in over 100 years from in boxing so you know those kind of accomplishments that I really enjoy mm -hmm. And, you know, for our viewers that are maybe afraid to go after their dreams or, you know, something's holding them back, what advice do you have for them to, you know, take, you know, their career or, or, or passions to the next level? Um, you know, everybody's afraid of the unknown when they go for when they're thinking about their career. They just don't want to make that step. You know, they, they, they're too comfortable in their box. I say step out of your box. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, you know, I was frustrated one time. Like, you know, I was telling my friend, I'm, I'm in a box now. I feel like I'm in a box. And I said, Lennox, step out of the box. Mm -hmm. It was just that simple thing he said that really, you know, alerted me and said, you know, you're right. I'm going to step out of the box. Now, don't be afraid to take chances. And, you know, remember, you only live once. You yeah. know, so go for yours, take it. This is your opportunity. You shouldn't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, it should be adventurous, you know. Open the door. The door will not open for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's incredible advice, especially stepping out yeah. of the box because, you know, some people stay in their comfort zone and never get out. So I, I think that's great advice. And, you know, I always like to end the show on a positive note. And I want to talk about how you're using your platform for good. Um, you know, you're involved in a lot of charity work. You also have the League of Champions. So let's talk about your your organization. Yeah, the Lennox Lewis League of Champions, you know, organization. We want to help, you know, young kids be the best that they can. I think of myself, like I said, myself, if I didn't have uh, poor, important people step into my life and say, hey, that's wrong, or what are you thinking, you know, uh, or you should focus, you should sacrifice, and, and this is how you should do it. You know, I don't think I would have reached as far as I have. 
So I want to do that for other kids out there with Lennox Lewis League of Champions. So we, you know, run a lot of uh, mentorship uh, camps and boxing camps, and uh, we, we help young kids be the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel like seeing that your organization is making an impact and changing lives? It feels good. I mean, you know, my, um, I feel good when parents come back to me and say, hey, you know, you're, what you're doing is really affecting my child in a positive way. Thank you. We need more uh, uh, boxing camps. We need more of your mentorship and, and what you're saying, what you're doing. So, you know, it makes me feel good. Well, Knox, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been an honor and you're such an inspiration. So please come back anytime. Thank you for having me and I will come back, no problem. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.